Now let's rejoin the two teams as they go walk about around the Queensland outback, this time the prawning capital of Australia. Once again we're on the road north and soon found out how extreme and isolated these parts really can be. When a sign says there's no food or fuel for the next 200 kilometres out here, it really means it, so you pull in. When a sign boasts the country's highest recorded temperature at 53.1 degrees Celsius, it's probably best you stay in the car. And if this supposed life-size monument of a crocodile caught in these parts was any indication of what was in store for us, well, we had every right to be a little bit nervous. Well, we've just driven all day from Mount Isa on the way to the Gulf Country and a little fishing town called Karumba. Now, we've heard some exciting stories about this place, so we thought it's time to try it out for ourselves. Ha, <laughs> look at this population small. Well, this is it, the main drag of Karumba. It doesn't seem to consist of much more than this street, one over there, a couple of coconut palms and a few fibro shacks. It's all about the four-wheel drives and the fishing rods out here. How's the weather? Located at the mouth of the Norman River, Kurumba is a small town with a big fishing trade, being the centre of the Gulf's prawn and barramundi industry. Often completely isolated in the wet season and surrounded by wetlands, Kurumba truly is the gateway to the wild gulf of Carpentaria. Well, this is it, the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now, Cape York, the northern tip of Australia, is just up that way. Eastern Arnhem Land, just over there, and the islands of Indonesia, just over the horizon. It's a vast, unspoilt expanse of water renowned for its remote beaches and abundant marine life, in particular the largest and most ferocious of all the reptiles, the estuarine or saltwater crocodile. But we weren't going to come all the way up here to the Gulf and miss out on witnessing one of the country's wildest natural environments. Even if the number of potentially deadly creatures up here do far outweigh the number of people they could bite, sting or eat. At the mouth of the Norman River, Kurumba itself is surrounded by a series of saltwater estuaries. These wetlands are a haven for bird species such as pelicans, ospreys and sea eagles. So we've teamed up with local experts Alison and Glenn to show us some of the birds in the area and they've also promised to show us some of the region's more toothy residents. Currently we're heading south west. Uh, we're heading towards Normanton. As you can see, a mangrove lined waterway, really quite wide. It's about half a nautical mile from one bank to the other in this widest patch. On the river itself, there's all sorts of things. Wonderful array of bird life. Um, your standard egrets and kites and, and things that are large. Um, all the way through to little tiny red headed honey eaters and white breasted whistlers that only hang out in the mangrove section between roughly Karamba through to Broome. It's a really good combination, especially for the wildlife and the birds. But there is one species in particular that we simply could not keep off our minds. And after all the stories we had heard about what lurks in these waters, we had expected a heavily armoured gunship as the escort for this adventure. Though seeing this big salty slide into the murky water with the town of Karumba sitting right there behind him didn't exactly make us want to join the open water swimming team. However, we were on the lookout for something truly humongous and that is exactly what we found. This right here is a solid 15 feet of muscle, teeth and leather, truly a site of prehistoric survival and a pretty good reason to stay out of the water. And while we were worried about being eaten, our new local mates were more concerned with eating something themselves. So they thought it was time to introduce us to one of the region's true delicacies, mud crab. <laughs> Looks like you get the lively one, Tim. <laughs> well, here we go. And just like that, a fully grown mud crab was let loose in the boat for us to wrestle. And no one said anything about my poor choice in footwear. With claws strong enough to crush bones, knowing how to tie a mud crab is an art many North Queenslanders pride themselves on. Needless to say, I was thrown straight in the deep end. Through the other nipper. Yep, pull them in. Let's see how that goes. There we go. Yep, that's awesome. Now you should just be able to pull, keep them tight. Yep, and just tie it off there. So tie it off here. Yep. One Queensland mud crab. You got him. Sunsets are another thing that make the Gulf a prized destination for the intrepid traveller. 
and out on the water, you truly get the best view of this spectacular site. Sunsets are one of those things that always seem to mesmerise us. How many of us have gone away on holiday, taken rolls and rolls of film, but the one that always makes it to our wall is that beautiful sunset over the ocean. We can see a million but never really get sick of them, but to witness a sunset over the Gulf of Carpentaria is something truly special. That one is definitely going to make it to my wall. Well, this is actually quite funny. We've just come into town to pick up some supplies and we found all the shops are shut. There's no one on the streets. The entire place has literally turned into a ghost town. And we just found out the reason for this is that today is the local school fate, the largest event on Karama's calendar. What kind of a school fate goes to 1 a.m. anyway? When I think of a school fate, I think of fairy floss and jumping castles. However, the Karumba school fate, it's got here on the timetable, they also have a DJ, a licensed bar, toad racing, and it's got here two Tim's clown suits. Must be a typo. But it turns out it wasn't a typo at all. When the last clown at the Karumba school fate had a nervous breakdown, they decided to call in the experts. That's us, apparently. <laughs> there are some wild cl clowns this year, yeah, some crazy people, and they are giving the kids lots of lollies and hyping them up, that's great. <laughs> As a school we need the funds and the whole community gets behind it to increase the funds for our students so that they have the best access to learning. I would say it's the biggest event in this region or district of the year. It's pretty amazing and we, that's why we draw so many people up. Adults and children are encouraged to stay on beyond the afternoon so that they can enjoy the night activities. But it's definitely more of an adult party after hours. Well, it certainly is an event with a difference, something you can only really witness up here in the far north of Australia. This right here is a cane toad, one of Australia's most prolific pests. And I suppose it makes perfect sense if you can't get rid of them, learn to live with them and maybe have a little bit of fun along the way. The aim of the game is simple. Drop the toad in the middle of the circle. The first one to jump outside of the circle wins. Let's go check it out. Going once, twice. Once the toads had been auctioned off, they were placed in the middle of a circle and released. With a bit of assistance, they hopped and hopped. The first one to leave the circle, bringing its owner fame and fortune. And as if we hadn't been humiliated enough for one day, to conclude our Karumba School Fate experience, we had also been signed up for a local fundraiser that involved parading around in the most embarrassing array of clothing that the deranged local organiser could possibly conjure up. <laughs> Lucky we got a couple of cheers. <laughs> 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 